So one of the most common questions I get is what applications do I install when I install Linux? Because you guys know that I typically install window managers. I like tiling window managers, so I don't install full desktop environments because a full desktop environment comes with its own complete suite of applications. It's already going to come with a text editor and terminal and file manager, and, you know, all your applications, right? And for me, I like to pick and choose which applications I want because all of the big desktop environments, so GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, XFCE, Mate, they all come with their own default suite of applications. And some of their default applications are really good, but a lot of their default applications, I think, are lacking. I think there's better alternatives than a lot of the default applications for your major desktop environments. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to highlight some applications, some very cool applications that I think are better than the default applications that you're currently using for these tasks if you're using a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE Plasma. Now the first thing I want to talk about is text editors. Every big desktop environment ships with a text editor. You've got GNOME and Gedit, which is a good text editor. Uh, KDE ships with Kate, which is a really good text editor. Uh, you've got other text editors like Mousepad and Leafpad and Zed. And, you know, all of these plain text editors are really nice. But if you want a good graphical plain text editor, this is in every Linux distribution's repositories. It's free and open source software, and it's just fantastic. And this is Genie. Now, Genie is really cool because it has a plugin system. You can enable all kinds of little plugins. For example, like my file tree here, kind of like a nerd tree kind of plugin, like you would use in something like Vim. Of course, this little side menu, I mean, I could look through this documents view or the symbols view if I wanted to see, for example, what functions are actually in this particular bash script that we're looking at. In the bottom pane here right now, I'm looking at the terminal, but we could look at status, compiler, messages. We have a scribble pad, a little scratch pad I could take notes in, or of course, I could run commands at the terminal. Genie is very customizable as far as color schemes. There's not only a, a really nice plugin system, there's also a really big collection of Genie themes. Now, if you're on an Arch-based system, what you want to do is you want to install a, a few different packages. You want to install Genie, you want to install Genie-plugins, so that gives you the main package for Genie. Genie plugins gives you a whole bunch of plugins that you can enable if you want to enable them. And then in the AUR, you want to install a third package called Genie-themes. If I can spell it correctly, you'll find Genie-themes in the AUR. And once you have the themes package, installed you should be able to go into view change color scheme and you have a variety of themes here you have like 30 different color schemes you could choose from if you want light themes or dark themes you know you got a few different things to choose from actually that's a very nice theme there i might just keep that one so if the plain text editor that your desktop environment currently ships with isn't working for you please check out genie i've done videos on genie in the past go check out some of my older videos on genie now, one area that I think really all the major desktop environments seriously lack in is their default video players, because, you know, all the video players that things like GNOME, KDE, and all these desktop environments ship with, they're just okay. But you know what is a really fantastic video player? VLC. One of the most popular free and open source pieces of software out there. It's a cross-platform, Windows, Mac, Linux. Probably billions of people have, have used this over the years. It's probably had billions of downloads. It's that popular. When I say it's one of the most popular pieces of free and open source software on the planet, seriously, uh, I'm not joking, VLC really should be the default uh, video player slash multimedia player on most Linux systems. I mean, if I was in control of a Linux distribution, this would be what I would default to over things like, for example, Totem and Gnome, which is not great. One of the cool things about VLC is it ships with all the multimedia codecs. It supports all your audio and video formats. So even though it's a video player, you can play audio in it as well. So you could use it as your music player and your video player if you wanted. Some cool features that I really love is if I go into audio, you have uh, audio tracks here in the audio menu. Now, I don't currently have a, a audio file open here, but if I did, 
if it had multiple tracks in the recording, you know, I could actually separate the various tracks. So like, for example, when I record this video here, I could record my microphone audio on one stream on one track, and I could record my computer's desktop audio on another track. And if I wanted to listen to each track on its own, you know, I could do that in something like VLC very easily through this menu. So I really love some of the advanced features of VLC. A lot of the stuff in this menu system, you know, most people are not going to need. You know, typically, you just play a video and you hit the play button and maybe you hit the pause button on occasion. You know, a lot of people are not going to explore all the fantastic features of VLC, but if you need those features, you'll really appreciate how wonderful VLC is. Another really fantastic program I want to share with you is a screenshot utility because many of the big desktop environments do have their own screenshot tool. But honestly, there is nothing that beats Flameshot. And I have Flameshot sitting in my sys tray right now. It's this blue icon here. If I click on it, you can see it gives me some keyboard shortcuts that I could do. For example, Control S to save a screenshot. But before I save a screenshot, I need to draw an area on the screen that I want to save. Maybe I want to draw this conky area on the screen. Let me go ahead and highlight that and then Control S to save. And now I can choose where I want to save this particular photograph, right? And then this image that I save. Now I'm going to cancel that. I use Flameshot all the time because I'm constantly taking screenshots of various programs that I have running on my other channel, the DT Options channel. I often take screenshots of certain trades I'm considering, and then that's what I do. I just hit the Flameshot icon here, and then I go ahead and draw on the screen the exact area of the screen that I want the screenshot to save to. Control S to save, and then I type whatever name I want to the image, and away I go. And again, it's just a wonderful little tool, and I really think it is an improvement over that default screenshot you utility, for example, that GNOME ships with, because the GNOME uh, screenshot utility is just too simple of an application. It, it just doesn't have enough features. Another application that pretty much all desktop environments ship with, they all ship with a calculator. And for the most part, all the calculators available on Linux do the same thing. They're all pretty good. But the one I always default to is Calculate. Now, Calculate with a Q. So that is Calculate with a Q. Let me go to About, and you can see Calculate with a Q. It is a GTK application. And I say that because it starts with a Q. You might think it's a cute application, but it's a GTK application. It's got all your scientific calculator kind of buttons here. And if you wanted to change modes, you know, it's got a various different modes. It's got a ton of stuff. Like if you're a math nerd, this calculator has literally everything you could possibly want in it. What I really love about Calculate, though, is not the GUI here, but the fact that it also has a command line function called calc. So that is calc with a Q. And if I wanted to do something basic, like maybe I wanted to do 2 plus 1 here, you know, I can do that at the command line. So not only do you have your graphical application, if you wanted to script something using the command line utility calc, you could do that as well. And finally, I do want to talk about the default browsers that most desktop environments ship with. So all the browsers that ship as a default suite of applications on GNOME and KDE, they're all terrible, right? So you're talking about the Epiphany browser, right, for GNOME. You're talking about things like Falcon or whatever the hell they're calling it these days on KDE. They change the name so many times. I, I, I don't even know. Conqueror and Falcon and you know, whatever that KDE browser is, they're, they're no good, right? They're no good. And then most Linux distributions like 99% of Linux distributions, desktop Linux distributions, just default to shipping to Mozilla Firefox, which Mozilla Firefox is a fine browser. Like there's nothing wrong with it, but I do think there are ways to improve it. Because I've mentioned on camera before that Firefox is supposed to be all about privacy and security because it's a free and open source browser. But at the same time, its default settings are just bad for privacy and security. So a better option would be LibreWolf. LibreWolf is essentially Firefox, but with a lot more privacy and security settings already enabled. It's much more uh, security centric. It's already got uBlock Origin, and so it's already got your ad blocking built into it. 
you can see it's already defaulting to using DuckDuckGo as a search engine rather than Google because obviously Mozilla Firefox is in bed with Google. So again, if you're more privacy and security focused, but you like Firefox as far as the Firefox browser, you know, just install LibreWolf. It's essentially Firefox at sub, well, a lot of the bad parts are kind of stripped away. And let me mention a couple of bonus browsers because when I mentioned Firefox and LibreWolf, obviously, they're both Firefox based browsers, right? And some people need to use Chrome based browsers for various reasons, sites that they use need Chrome, whatever it is. I can understand some people need a Chromium based browser. Obviously, the browser that I love is Brave. I, I just absolutely love the Brave browser. It's essentially uh, one of these privacy focused browsers. It's already got your ad blocking. You don't have to worry about any of that. And it's just a fantastic browser. It's very simple in scope. You know, it's not very busy. There's not a ton of settings. Like I, I just like it. It's my kind of more minimal kind of application that I like. Another one I really like, Cute Browser. Now Cute Browser is gonna be kind of a different kind of browser because it is designed to be keyboard driven. So you do everything with the keyboard using Vim-like bindings. For example, I would hit O on the keyboard for open and I would just start typing something like, uh, do I have Google bookmarked? Yes, I do, and go to Google. If I hit I to insert, and now I can actually type something like distro tube, although I misspelled it and I misspelled uh, distort tube, but you know, let's search for distro tube instead. If I wanted to go forward and backwards in the search history, I mean, I could do something like capital H to go back, you know, capital H again to go back, capital L to go forward, capital L to go forward. And of course I could do colon Q to quit out of cute browser. So there you have it, some applications that I think, you know, you deserve to check out. If you haven't checked out any of the applications that I mentioned on this video, do an install. None of these applications take very long to install. Most of them are kind of small applications, minus the browsers, of course. But, you know, Genie and VLC and Calculate and Flameshot, these are programs that will probably install in just a couple of seconds on most Linux distributions. They're going to be found in your Linux distributions repositories. They're all free and open source software. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with these applications. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Warmer Dragon, Darloff, Daylist, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solastri, Tin One, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie, these guys. They're my high-steered patrons over on Patreon without these guys this episode about some applications you might want to check out because they're better than the default applications on your desktop environment. This video wouldn't have been possible without these guys. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.